Welcome everyone to the 2021 San Francisco Public Works Black History Month celebration. Althea and I are the co-chairs of this year's committee. We will be in conversation with President Shimon Walton. Welcome everyone. President Walton was elected president of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors in January of this year, having served as supervisor of District 10 since 2019. Prior to his service as the District 10 supervisor, he served for eight years as executive director of the Bayview Hunters Point nonprofit, Young Community Developers, YCD. President Walton also served as president of the San Francisco Unified School District's school board, having been elected to the board in 2014. President Walton was born in San Francisco and from an early age lived in Bayview and Potrero Hill public housing. He has worked in District 10 neighborhoods for decades and has witnessed firsthand the challenges our community faces. And without further ado, we welcome President Shaman Walton. Well, first of all, I just wanna say thank you so much for having me this afternoon. I appreciate the invitation. I'm excited to be able to engage with all of the employees uh, at the department and wanna say happy Black History Month and just let you know that I'm thankful for all the work that you have continued to do throughout this pandemic on the front lines, consistently working hard to keep our communities clean and safe. And so I want you to know that we thank you for your service and that we appreciate you. And I just wanna to just touch on one thing and that is when Carter G. Woodson, Dr. Carter G. Woodson started Negro History Week, he wanted to ensure that everyone knew the accomplishments of blacks in America, but more importantly, the fact that Black history was actually a major part of history here in the United States. And so this is not just a 28 day portion of the year, but this is actually something that is happening consistently 365 days a year, Black history is being made. Whether having our first woman elected mayor, our first Black Asian woman vice president, or our first true plan for reparations, including creating a working group specifically charged with addressing injustices and prioritizing ways that will overturn negative outcomes for Black people here in San Francisco. None of this will be possible without recognizing that our lives do matter. We need major change and we are a big part of history. So thank you so much for having me and looking forward to the discussion. Given that the theme of this year's Black History Month celebration is the Black family, please share with us one of your first memories you have of celebrating Black History Month with your family. Thank you for the question. And you know, for me, uh, being raised by a, a single parent, uh, I was just excited at the different books that my mom would bring home during Black History Month. She was very big on reading and early literacy. And so for my, for my youngest memories are of her making sure that we read Black books consistently, but I particularly remember her making sure that we read certain Black books during Black History Month. Uh, and I think that was very important for me and it gave me an opportunity to actually start learning more and more about our culture and our history here in the United States beyond slavery uh, at an early age. And that was important and excited, exciting for me at a young age. Thank you, President Walton. Your mother knew the statement that maybe some of us know well, leaders are readers. So she planted that seed and look, you're, you have been a leader for many years. So thank you. Thank, thank you to your mother. We honor her on, in Black History Month and every month. So, so the next question, what does racial equity, inclusion and diversity mean to you? How do you apply those definitions to the work that you do and the people you serve? Well, we have to look at equity, inclusion, and diversity beyond equality. Uh, I think a lot of people make a mistake of thinking that equality and equity are the same thing. And in fact, there's no way that you can achieve equity 
if you're going to say and believe that people start from the same starting line, because that's just not the case. And so to achieve real equity and, and, and diversity and inclusion, you have to understand that people start from a different starting point and that some folks are going to require, deserve, and are owed more resources, owed more opportunity if we're going to achieve equity, simply because they were behind in, in their starting point. And that is a very important thing to note. And so we have to provide those real, true, tangible resources and opportunities for folks who haven't had the same level of opportunity to be able to get ahead. And that applies to the Black population in San Francisco, that applies to the Latino population, that applies to uh, certain uh, Asian populations here in the city, because a lot of folks haven't had the same starting point. So the equity portion is making sure that the resources and supports go above and beyond for people who need them the most. The inclusion part is to make sure that with every opportunity that you put policies in place that are going to also let those folks be at the table because it would not happen without right, the right policies and the right strategies. And the diversity portion is of course, making sure that everyone is included in those opportunities and that you provide for a space for all voices, all opportunities and, and all that we do. President Walton, on January 8th of this year, you were elected president of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. Congratulations for being the first African-American man elected to this position. This Thanks. is exciting for all of us, especially as you have a proven track record of creating positive change in the community you serve. What role do you believe the San Francisco Board of Supervisors can or should play in helping the city achieve a higher level of racial equity, inclusion, diversity, fairness, and justice? Well, the Board of Supervisors has to first make policies and pass laws that are going to create and allow opportunity for, for true equity. Uh, one of the things we have worked on even prior to me becoming president of the Board of Supervisors is getting legislation and a reparations plan actually in law and on the books. And we have been able to achieve that. We now have a legislated reparations working group uh, that applications are being submitted for as we speak. They're gonna be charged with looking at all the injustices of black folks here in San Francisco, and then making sure that they prioritize and come up with strategies and the resources to fund what that reparations package and reparations plan is gonna look like. So we have to make sure that we're making laws and passing policies that are going to achieve equity for black people and get people to understand, we have a role to get people to understand and get information out that the negative outcomes that have existed for Black people have been existing far too long. And it's because of previous policies, it's because of previous laws that allowed for us to be in this position and in this space. Aside from going back to slavery, where we were brought here to this country to work for free, our education was taken away from us, our ability to reproduce was taken away from us. And so they really did a number on us making sure that we didn't have an opportunity to build and generate wealth. And we have to overturn it. So we have to make policies and laws that are uh, gonna be beneficial to achieving equity and social justice for the black population. But we also have to be vocal about it. We have to be unapologetic about it because as we continue to have conversations about equity and what it's gonna take to achieve that, that also means that some populations who have typically benefited from our plight benefited from the fact that we have so many negative outcomes are now going to have to lose some of those privileges that they've had previously. And, and, and that's always going to be hard. And we have to continuously bring that up, continuously talk about that and continuously work against that. Thank you so much, President Walton. Thank you for being a part of creating what I like to call um, righteous policies and laws, those that tackle injustices and oppressive uh, laws on the books. So thank you, thank you and everyone else on your guys' hard work. So President Walton, in your February 4th interview with Kamazi Aaron of ABC News, you noted that while the issues facing the Black community aren't new, being in the position to make change is. You also said, I was elected to do a job, noting that the things 
that we were going to fight for were equity, social justice, and making sure that our low income communities and black population have the opportunity to thrive. So President Walton, how can we as a community of city employees and residents of San Francisco work with you to actualize this vision? Well, I think the first thing one is to get the information out about some of the policies, the things we're working on and to provide input on that so that I can do my job well. I can't do my job without receiving input that goes from my folks in community, my constituents, but also the workforce here in San Francisco. And so I would even say conducting this forum and having this discussion is a form of bringing us together and providing an opportunity for us to work towards achieving some of the goals that my office is pushing for, and quite frankly, some of the goals of my colleagues. Uh, so allowing the space to exist and happen. I think that continuing to fight in your specific department for the racial justice and equity uh, that a lot of our city departments are pushing for is an important piece now. As we're looking to change certain policies around EEO complaints and who is the person uh, or the entity that is going to address those and deal with those, the input that I get from city employees, the input that I get, of course, from Black employees is an important piece of helping me figure out ways that I can be helpful with our workforce. And so it's really just about spending time and discussions and engagement and having these conversations, uh, letting me know what issues exist so that we can formulate policy and, and in conjunction with our conversations that are gonna be effective and helpful for you um, as, as workers for the city, but also for folks in our community. Some of you live here, obviously, and you see what happens in our communities from day to day. And so providing input as employees and people who live here is an important piece of me being able to do my job well. And I just want to thank you for even asking that question uh, and uh, having a conversation about being available to, to be in a place where we can work together on some of these discussions and these issues that we need to address for our community. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that we are better and stronger together. So this last question, and before I read it, I just want to thank you for exemplifying to, to all of us that you, you don't have to be a product of your environment. And also, most important, importantly, thank you for modeling true Black excellence to our Black people, specifically to our Black boys and men. And if I can, to echo what Althea is saying, um, thank you for being a product of your mother's environment, of really taking in the lessons and the books and the learning and the nurturing and the vision that she had for you. And I think that um, every time you strive and you speak to people, you speak to the community, you speak to, people that are just in need of guidance, um, it's one more way of honoring her. So thank you for that. Thank you. So President Walton, the million dollar question. <laughs> what would you like future generations to read about you or write about you in our history books? Oh, wow. Um, I, I, I think for me, I, I, I one would just want people to be able to state and say that I was someone who understood that your resume could change. Um, so no matter the lessons that you had to learn along the way, that you're, you know, our people can be successful in spite of that. I mean, if if we weren't in this place right now, my, and if we didn't believe in being able to change a resume, my resume would have read single mother, single parent home, had two children before the age of 18, expelled from school several times, in and out of juvenile hall. So that could have been what defined me in my life. But the fact that I had a strong mother, the fact that I had mentors like Phil, Fillmore Graham, whose picture you see behind me, or Dr. Marshall, who started the Omega Boys Club, live and free here in San Francisco. The fact that you're know, understanding you have an opportunity to get good information 
learn how to to handle situations differently, overcome that, and uh, really just use your your past challenges to to your future success. And so I would just hope that they would say that he understood that his circumstances was not going to be able to define him and that having that knowledge and information, he also understood, as you can see in this picture behind me depicted, where someone is reaching over and an arm is lifting up, that being able to help other people and bring other people forward and helping other people overcome some of the obstacles that you have does not mean that you have to weigh yourself down and does not mean that it's going to interfere with your opportunities. And so we have to give back. We have to realize that all the information we've learned belongs actually to everyone else. And so I would hope that they understood that I truly and really feel, um, and not just talk about the fact, I believe we should give back to our community, but actually I'm working hard to do that so that our young folks and folks coming behind us can be successful. Thank you, President Walton. Once again, we appreciate you. And my God, your resume can change. That really hit home for me. Thank you once again. Much blessings on this afternoon. Thank you so much. And happy Black History Month, everybody. I appreciate all the work of the Department of Public Works. Thank you, President Walton, for being in conversation with us co-chair Althea O'Brien, Alicia Willis for the San Francisco Public Works Black History Month Committee. Thank you.